Hi guys, welcome to this review of Balme and La Walsa Zenatse. Remember to check the description for links to the free previews of the books mentioned on the video. I'm going to guide you to the Italian edition of the book, which is a very different and much improved version than the English edition. I know there's a third English edition that recently came out, I have not seen it, but judging from the preview and the Amazon reviewers, I can tell that the printing quality diminished, but it did not change at all in its layout and organization, which I believe are terrible and do a disservice to the excellent Greek text which it contains. In order to make a fair comparison of the English and Italian editions, one must say that despite its shortcomings, the English edition was and remains a good book. And yet the difference between them is shocking, just to give you some numbers. The first volume of the English edition has a total of 359 pages, of which only 110 contain Greek text. Of the 506 pages of the Italian edition, 244 pages contain Greek text. A similar ratio is valid for the volume 2 of the books. And the difference is not only in quantity, it's also in the way the information is organized and presented. Whereas the English editions present you with just the Greek text, its vocabulary and occasionally some images, not always related with the narrative, mind you, its main focus is the grammar explanations, which I would call descriptions rather than explanations, and in several sections about Greek history and culture. I'm not gonna lie, those are very interesting and useful. Most of them have been copied into the Italian version, but I can't help feeling a bit disappointed by the way the authors almost forget that they are trying to teach the language. It's like going to one cheap language course where the teacher spends half the time telling you about personal anecdotes instead of teaching the language. To make it worse, the way the information is presented is very arid and a bit confusing. The vocabulary that you learn is not systematically repeated. Often it appears only once. There are practically no images to help you understand the text or discover the meaning of new words. You are systematically forced to look on the vocabulary and the notes in English. There's no use of synonyms or paraphrases or anything to help you learn Greek while actually using Greek. If one were to compare the English Athenatse with Orbert's Familia Romana, on the scale from 1 to 10, Familia Romana being a perfect 10, the English Athenatse would be somewhere between a 6 and 7. The job the Italian editors did is so amazing, it's like when you send a couple of explorers with nothing but a knife into the jungle and they build you a shopping center. The difficulty of the task was so imposing and the odds were so against them that any criticism might seem like grumpy nitpicking. And yet, for honesty's sake, we must admit that not even the Italian Athenatse is as good as it could be. It's not a perfect Greek equivalent of Orberg's lingua latina per se illustrata, but it's the closest thing there is to it. From 1 to 10, I'd say it's between 8 and 9. Just like the English edition, the Italian Athenatse presents a continuous narrative at the main text, revolving around the Athenian farmer Decaiopolis and his family. The basic idea is the same as Orberg's, present a small graded novel as a narrative argument to teach the language. Instead of focusing on the vocabulary lists, the Italian Athenatse presents images, synonyms and paraphrases, and yes, occasionally some notes in Italian, but they do diminish as you advance through the book. At the end of each chapter you'll find a small enchiridion, which is a very simple explanation of the grammar and syntax of each chapter. You get a set of exercises, and a small reading section, which is a sequel to the main text and more exercises. Note that there's no answer key. Then you'll find a small section with information regarding Greek history or culture, basically the same that you find in the English version. And then you get a list of the vocabulary present on the chapter, but without translation. At the end of the book you'll find a small grammar section, with very simple and short explanations in Italian, an excellent chapter on syntax, and two lists of vocabulary, one from Greek to Italian, another from Italian to Greek. I have the greatest respect for the Italian editors. I cannot imagine how much work and sleepless nights it took them to make so many improvements on the book. They almost succeeded in creating the perfect course book. So it's with great regret that I point to some minor flaws. I feel like a spoiled brat complaining because the car or smartphone he got for his birthday is red instead of blue, so please forgive me if I come out as too demanding. Basically, unlike the Lingua Latina per se illustrato series, which can take you from Zero to Cicero using only Latin, a Senate is like a stair missing the first step. You will need to be very disciplined to get through the first two or three chapters, but after that everything goes very smoothly. Also, you will from time to time have to consult the vocabulary, and maybe even an Italian dictionary. That's not the case at all with the Lingua Latina per se illustrata course. 
Orbert designed his method with mathematical precision so that every single word could be understood easily from the context. And that's not always the case with Athenatse. Even if the Italian editors took great pains to expand the narrative so as to repeat more often and systematically the vocabulary and grammar structures in order to give you more exposure, it's not the same perfect gradation that you find in the Lingua Latina per se illustrata series. There, I said it. I didn't want to give you false hopes. In all fairness, we must remember that from the very beginning, the Lingua Latina per se illustrata course was designed specifically for self-learners, whereas Athenatse was originally meant to be used in a class and presupposed a teacher. It's to the great merit of the Italian editors to have managed to make this very difficult adaptation. Despite these shortcomings, the Italian Athenatse remains the very best Greek course there is. There's of course an exercise book. The only flaw it has is that there's no answer key, but it's otherwise excellent. In fact, it's so good that it's by itself an improvement on the main book. The exercises force you to really understand the text. There's almost no explicit grammar questions, the emphasis being on vocabulary, reading and comprehension, and my favorite part, the open questions in Greek to be answered in Greek. A capable teacher can easily adapt all these exercises into oral exercises, but a self-learner can do it too. There are two extra workbooks, very similar, which I personally recommend to get hold of. The more practice, the better. Be aware that there's no answer key for them. You may, if you wish, buy the English workbooks. I've only seen them briefly, but they seem very good to me. The first volume was made in collaboration with the Italian editor. Everything I said about the first book of Athena says is valid to the second book. The second part is by far the most interesting part of the course. It's basically an anthology of passages from Herodotus, Thucydides, Plato, Bacchylides and Aristophanes, slightly adapted to fit into the narrative. We follow the adventures of Dicaeopolis and his son Philip, that, among other things, debate politics in the Agora, they travel to Greece, visit the sanctuary of Asclepius at Epidaurus, Philip meets Socrates, all of this right before the start of the Peloponnesian War. It's a really interesting story, I cannot recommend it enough. Just like with Volume 1, you get a small Enchiridion at the end of the chapter, some exercises, a cultural information section, and a vocabulary list. There's also an exercise book, which is just as good as the first one. Remember that there's no answer key. There's two additional anthologies to be read after chapter 13 of Athenatse. The first, Ephodion, contains some fables from Aesop, fragments of philosophers, fragments of Menander, of the New Testament, and the Alexander Romans. All with the typical marginal annotations in Greek with images, synonyms, and paraphrases. The second Ephodion, to be read after you have begun the second volume, is an anthology of Apollodorus, Xenophon, Herodotus, and Iamblichus. Most interestingly, there's an edition of Seba's Tablet, designed for students that have finished chapter 20 of the second volume. It's a very interesting philosophical narrative. A bit esoteric maybe, but nonetheless an excellent text for beginners. Additionally, I know from a very good source that there's a Spanish translation of the Italian edition, but I don't know when it will hit the market. And that's it with the books. Just a mal note, as you may have guessed, since there's no perfect order equivalent for Greek, you most probably will have to supplement the gaps with other readers and anthologies, and perhaps with a second method. This isn't mandatory. You can perfectly teach yourself Greek with the material mentioned, without overwhelming difficulty. But it won't be as easy as learning Latin with the Lingua Latina per se illustrata series. I'll make another video about the other four Greek methods out there that you can use to complement and partially substitute a senatsing.